let's imagine we're beginning a new data analysis project. So we've got our studio open and you might be tempted to just create a new script and begin writing your code, but that's not where we want to start. We want to start with a good foundation for how we're going to organize our files in this project. And to accomplish that, we're going to take advantage of a RStudio feature called Projects. So on the top right, we can see a drop-down list of options that will allow us to work with projects. We're going to say New Project. This gives us a few different options. For this example, we're going to create a new directory. So we're starting with a brand new project, brand new directory on our computer. If we already had an existing directory that we wanted to set up as an RStudio project, we could do that with the second option. And then finally, if we are working with version control, we could start a project that way. But we're going to start real simple, just a blank slate, new directory, new project. What follows is a list of project template options, which can basically do some initial setup for our project, depending on what we're trying to create. In this example, we want to go real basic. So we're just going to go with a basic new R project. Next, we want to give our project a name, and the name we give to our project is going to match the directory name for this project on our computer. Now, for my example, I downloaded some sample data from Kaggle.com uh, that has information about employee attrition. So let's imagine our project is about uh, employee satisfaction. So for my directory name, I'm going to say employee satisfaction analysis. And a key thing to observe about the name here is I want it to be descriptive. I want to be clear what this project is about. I also want to avoid any special characters, things like at signs or dollar signs. This is going to be a directory on our computer. And so generally speaking, directory names should only have letters, numbers. And then if you have multiple words, you can separate them with dashes or you could use underscores. I don't recommend using spaces. You can have spaces in uh, directory names on certain operating systems, but oftentimes it just creates confusion. So uh, try to avoid that whenever possible. Once you've come up with a good project or directory name, you want to indicate where on your computer you want this to go. Uh, in my case, it's just going to go on my desktop, but if I wanted to change that, I could click Browse, choose a different directory, but I'm okay with putting it on my desktop. Following that are two options that can further configure your directory with some initial setup. If you choose to set it up as a Git repository, it's going to set it up with some Git version control files. You could also use our environments. Both of these things are beyond the context of this video. I recommend checking them out, but we're not going to spend too much time on them. We're just going to leave them unchecked. We are, however, going to check this option to open a new session. In our studio, a session contains the following things I have listed on the screen. And because we're starting a new project, we really want to blank slate all of those things. We don't want to carry any of those things over from previous work we're doing. We want to start fresh, so we're definitely going to open a new session. With all those settings in place, we'll click Create Project. You can see our studio is firing up a new session. And with this new session started, there are two things I want you to observe right out of the gate. The first is when we look at the project dropdown option on the top right, it now matches the name of the project we just created, Employee Satisfaction Analysis. So this basically tells us this is the project that we're in. If we were to click this, we could open other projects. We could create a new project. But of course, right now, we just want to stay in this current project. The other thing to observe is our working directory. Looking down at files, you can see it set our current working directory to be that employee satisfaction analysis directory that was created on our desktop. We could also see that reflected in our console. We see that same path here. If we were to invoke the get working directory command, it should also report that directory. Now, this setting of the current working directory when we open up a project is a key feature we get with our Studio projects. And a little bit later in this video, I'll talk about why that's so useful. And just as a hint, it has to do with portability when we start to want to share this work with others. Before we get to that, though, let's dig into some of the other details of things that happened when we created this project. You'll notice that within the directory itself, we have a file that's named after the project. So it's employee satisfaction analysis, same name as our project. And it ends with this .rproj extension. This is the configuration file for this project. And if we click it here in our studio, it's going to bring up our project options window where we can customize basically how our studio is going to work when we have this particular project open. For example, let's say when I'm working in this project, I don't want our studio to ever save my workspace. All right, the workspace is just going to contain things like whatever objects I currently have in memory. Let's say I don't want our studio to save that. For this project specific option, I'm going to change this to no. Then if I say OK, that's going to update this R project file with that information. And just to see that, I want to look at the underlying contents of this file. All it is is just a text file with some settings that RStudio is reading. 
and I can't open it in our studio because as we saw, if we click it here, it's just gonna open up my project options. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my file explorer. Let's go to the directory for this project on my desktop. There's that R project file. And I'm not gonna double click it to open it because all it's gonna do is just try to open the project in our studio. Instead, I'm gonna right click it, say open with other, and I'm just gonna choose a basic text editor on my computer. So let me just find one. Let's use Sublime Text. This is gonna allow me to see the inner text contents of this file. And what you can see is just a bunch of key value pairs for the settings for this project. For example, a moment ago, I just said to not save workspaces with this project. And we can see that setting right here. The option is save workspace and it's set to no. Now you don't ever have to directly edit the contents of this file because as we saw, we could just open up this nice visual editor for it here in our studio. But I just wanted to show what that file is. It's just a configuration file that exists within this project directory. So now that we've got our project set up, we understand a little bit what's happening behind the scenes. Let's talk about some of the details of working within this project. What would your basic workflow look like? Well, typically the first thing you're gonna do when you start a data analysis project is to import some data. And we wanna keep things organized. So within my parent project folder, I'm just gonna create a subdirectory specific for data. So let's say new folder, call it data. And as I mentioned, I downloaded some sample data for this example. So I'm gonna move it into this data directory. So coming back to my file explorer on my desktop, here's the example data I had downloaded. It's employeeattrition.csv. So I'm gonna move that into my project folder. And then once it's in there, I wanna make sure it goes in the data subdirectory. Then returning to our studio, if we go into the data directory, we can see that CSV file. And now we're gonna create a script that's gonna open up and work with that CSV file. And once again, it's a good idea to keep things organized. So I'm gonna create another subdirectory just for my scripts. So we're gonna say new folder and I'm gonna call it scripts. And then within that scripts directory, let's create a new file. We're gonna create a new R script. And to begin with, I'm just gonna call this start. Ultimately, I know as I evolve within this project, I'm probably gonna have multiple files to handle the different processes within my data work. For example, I might have a file that's just responsible for opening the data sets and doing some cleanup on it. Then I might have another script responsible for doing analysis on that data. And then finally, I might have a script for creating visualizations. Uh, but to begin with, we're gonna start really simple. I'm just gonna call it start because that's where I'm gonna put my starting code. And then later as this evolves, I could always reorganize this and give it a more appropriate name for what I'm actually doing in this file. So let's click OK. That creates our file, opens it up in our code editor. And the first thing I wanna do is load my data. So I'm gonna create an object called employee data. And we're gonna assign this to an invocation of ours read.csv function. And for the path, I wanna think back to that working directory we saw earlier, which is the root of this employee satisfaction analysis uh, directory. So if we wanna to get to our data file within the data directory, the path is gonna be relative to this root directory. In other words, we're just simply gonna say data forward slash employee attrition dot CSV. All right, even though I'm in the scripts directory where I'm writing this, remember the working directory is the root of this project. So any paths I reference are gonna be relative to that. Let's go ahead and run this line, make sure it can find that file. And perfect, there is our data showing up in our environment. So there's our employee data object. You can see that there were about 15,000 observations and 10 variables. So that's showing us the inner contents of that file. If we were to click this, of course, in our studio, it's gonna show us a table view of that data. And of course I could start to work with that data. Maybe I wanna get some descriptive statistics. So I could say summary of employee data, run that. And then we can see the output of that in the console below. Take a look at that. And of course, continue to write whatever R code you need to work with this data. So that's the basic flow of working in an R Studio project, but let's talk about what happens when you close that project. Uh, how do you reopen it? And also how do you share this project with others? So to close the project, I could simply just exit out of R Studio, or if I go to the project dropdown again, I could choose to close the project. It's gonna ask me if I wanna save changes to my start script and I do, so I'm gonna say save. And now I'm basically in a new blank slate session. You can see I don't have any projects currently open. If I wanted to reopen that project that I just closed out from the dropdown, I could choose to open project, navigate to my desktop, find the project directory, and then click the R project file and say open. Alternatively, if I go to the dropdown, it'll list your recently opened projects. So that's a quicker way to get to it. Uh, or if I wanted to get to it from my computer itself, 
I just go to that directory on my desktop, find the R project file, double click it, and that should open it as well. Now, the final highlight I want to talk about in regards to RStudio projects is portability. Everything in this project is basically bundled together in its own container. And so if I were to share that container or project with a collaborator, they would be able to reproduce the same working environment on their system. To simulate this, let's go over to my file explorer, find our directory, and I'm just going to create a zip of it so I could easily share it. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say compress. And then I'm going to transfer the resulting zip to a separate operating system I have. So basically a completely different computer just to simulate what it would look like if I shared this with a colleague. So with the magic of editing, I'll make that happen now. And here we are on the separate computer, separate operating system, actually running Windows over here. I move the zip folder over. You can see it's currently in my documents directory. And I'm just going to uncompress this. I'm going to right click it and we'll go to extract all. It wants a destination for where to extract the files. I'm gonna put this in my documents folder. Click extract. And then here we are, we can see we're in our documents. This is the original zip file, which I don't need that anymore. So I'm just gonna right click that and delete it. Here's our project folder. We do have a directory here called Mac OS X, and this is just a meta file that was created when I zipped the directory on my Mac computer. We could ignore that. In fact, we could actually go ahead and delete that. All right, so that leaves us with just our project directory on the separating operating system. If we open it up, we're gonna see all the key things we saw on my Mac computer in regards to this project. Here is the project itself, employee satisfaction analysis. You can see the little RStudio icon there. Now on my Mac, it did have a .rproj extension. In the Windows uh, environment, it's just hiding that extension, but it's the same type of file. So if I were to double click this, it should open this project in RStudio. And there we go, it opened it up and you could see it set my working directory to be the employee satisfaction analysis. And let's again have uh, RStudio tell us what the current working directory is. So it's pointing to that folder. And notice in this context, it's specific to the computer in which I'm running this. So on this computer, I put it in my documents directory. On my Mac computer, I had it in my desktop. And it doesn't matter, different developers are gonna put directories in different locations on their computer. But the key thing is that because this is portable, any of the paths that I reference in this project should still work, even if the parent directory is in a different location. Uh, and let's make sure that's the case. So let's go into our scripts directory, open up our start.r, and let's make sure we can open up our data file. So I'm gonna run this line, and perfect. You can see it was able to find that because there was nothing in this path that was specific to my operating system, right? It didn't reference my Mac computer or my desktop. It was all relative to the project, and that's what makes it portable. So with that, I'm going to wrap things up. Hopefully this guide was useful to understanding how to create projects in RStudio and why they're so beneficial, especially when it comes to portability.